Lasagna is one of the favorites of almost everybody who likes Italian food, and there's a ton of different varieties that you can work with, from the traditional with sausage to hamburger and all kinds of cheese. Today we're going to do a vegetarian version with spinach. We're going to start with a teaspoon, two teaspoons, excuse me, of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, canola oil, whichever one you want to work with. And then we have two cloves of garlic that I've minced up fairly well. We want these to start uh, to brown a little bit, but we don't want them to, or to soften a little bit, but we don't actually want them to brown. So we're just going to get those going just a tad. And we didn't have the heat up quite enough, so it's going to take just a minute longer. This is what happens when you work at home on, on some things and then work here at the, at the garden. You're not as familiar with the range here, so I'm not always quite as fast as uh, to catch things going from one stage to another as I usually am at home. Uh, we'll assume that that has moved on a little bit. We just want to get the flavors developing. And to that, I'm going to add about one and a half cups of tomato sauce. And this can either come from that that you canned earlier in the year or commercial tomato sauce. Either one will work fine. And then also about two cups of diced tomatoes or very finely diced tomatoes. Or you can use whole tomatoes, whole canned tomatoes that you're going to uh, break up into small pieces. You just need two cups of tomatoes. And again, this is a very good place to use up some of those uh, items that you have in your pantry from the, the last fall so that you can make room for new produce as it comes off this summer. I'm also going to put in there a half a teaspoon of oregano, and you can use whether you have uh, the whole oregano, dried oregano, or you could use ground oregano, either one of those works, and a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. Now, if you are using tomatoes that you've canned yourself and you know that you did not add any salt to them, you might want to taste this just a little bit and add just a small amount of salt, but I wouldn't add any more than, say, half a teaspoon at the most because you're going to be adding other ingredients, particularly the cheese, and that's going to add a lot of salty flavor to it later on. So I'd be real hesitant to do much uh, more to the addition at this time. If you're using commercially canned uh, tomatoes, you might want to look and see if you can get uh, those that are canned without additional salt added. All right, bring this up to a simmer, and we're basically just going to let it simmer while we work on the next phase here. So I'm going to start the burner on the other side. Whoops, wrong side. And see if we can switch things here. We've got that fairly low. Turn it up just a little bit more. We don't want it splattering out, but I do want it uh, to be a little bit more pronounced than that. Bring this up to a heat just a little bit, and we're going to add another two teaspoons of vegetable oil to this one. And let that sort of roll around in the pan to kind of coat it. We don't have to worry about that a lot because we're going to be stirring it as it goes. But let that one get started. And to that, we're going to add a fourth of a cup of chopped onion. Again, you don't have to chop it really finely because it's going to soften up. We want this also to start cooking to the point where it starts to get translucent. But we don't want it to brown either. We're just going to get that translucence and softening to it. And while that's going, we're going to add another ingredient. I've got about a half a cup of matchsticks carrots. And we're going to add those at the same time. And, and let those get started to soften up a little bit because the next ingredient we're going to add to this is the spinach and it's going to cook really, really fast. So we don't want to uh, have, have to be waiting on the onions and the carrots to cook when we have the spinach in here. Okay, these are nice and, and translucent or beginning to come translucent. Remember, this is going to go in the oven. We've got our oven preheating at 375. So if they're not quite done, that's okay. There's going to be more cooking later on. The next phase, we're going to add about 10 ounces of spinach leaves. And I'm losing a few already into the not into the pan, but we're going to put some of them in. We're just going to let them wilt. Now, if you have frozen spinach in your freezer, you can use frozen spinach too. Uh, a 10 ounce package of frozen spinach will be enough to do this. You might want to let it uh, thaw out a little bit before you start. And then you're going to continue to just turn this so that the spinach begins to wilt down. And you'll see it start to cook pretty quickly. It'll start to get darker and much limper, and you'll be able to put the rest of the spinach into the container. But you want to turn it around to try and mix it. If it's been frozen, you want to make sure that uh, you, you break it all up by doing this as well. Now, this is going to have a fair amount of moisture in it, and that's fine. A lot of times when we cook spinach, we drain away a lot of the moisture. 
But this is a, a lasagna that's using non-cooked noodles or, or uncooked noodles. And so having the extra moisture is important. That's the reason we use the tomatoes without draining them. We wanted to make sure we got that liquid so that we had enough to take care of the cooking process. And we also added plenty of tomato sauce, not just for the flavor and the nutrition, but also because we needed the moisture that we're going to get from that too. I've got a few pieces of onion on here I want to get into the, in the container also. So just keep turning it until it gets nice and limp. You can see that it's starting to cook uh, as I'm working and turning it over here. Okay, we're ready to start doing the layering. And the first thing I want to do is just put some sauce on the bottom of our pan. I've got an uh, 11 by uh, 12, that's not right, 9 by 12, excuse me. If you've got just a, a, a 9 by 13 pan, that's going to work too. You may need a few more noodles uh, to, to take care of it. The reason we want to put the sauce in the bottom is that we want the flavor to come up from the bottom. We don't want dry noodles in there since these are uncooked. Now, if you like to cook the noodles, you can do that. Uh, it's going to cut down the amount of time that it's going to take to bake, though, and we'll cover that in just a, a second here. I'm going to put about three of them in. I'm not going to overlap them the way I would if they were cooked noodles because I want to have plenty of, of uh, room for them to expand during the cooking, just like they would otherwise. Now, to the top of that, I'm going to add about a third of the sauce that remains, and I may need to spread it out a little bit here to make sure that it covers the noodles. We're going to pour the last layer. We're going to do this in layers. The layers are going to repeat. And the last one, you want to make sure you have sauce left over to, to do the top one. Then we're going to make two layers with spinach. So I'm going to kind of divide it in half so that we can get about the same amount of spinach and carrot mixture and just kind of stretch it around and spread it around so that everything gets some spinach, so that everybody, every bite should have a little bit of spinach in it at least. The carrots add a lot of extra nutrition. This is one of those ways to sneak some nutrients in that, that people might not know they're or not, not be willing to eat otherwise. And then I have 12 ounces of ricotta cheese. We're just going to put this in dollops on top. And again, we're going to put half of it on because we're going to repeat this layer as well. And I'm pushing it off with a spoon because it certainly does like to stick to my spoon. And again, if you kind of divide it, at least visually, or put a line through it in your container as you're going, uh, then you, you're not going to end up with one layer with a lot and one layer with very little. And it doesn't have to be really evenly distributed because we're going to put another layer of noodles on this and we're going to press down on it and that's going to help with that. We also have eight ounces of shredded uh, reduced fat mozzarella cheese. Half of that's going on here. And then we're just going to start repeating the layers. So I'm going to put another layer of the noodles on here and put the spinach and the sauce and just do the same thing again. got that last layer of noodles on. There was about eight ounces of lasagna noodles. I'm going to sprinkle it with a fourth of a cup of Parmesan cheese and then we're going to cover it with aluminum foil and put it in the in the freezer. Now if you wanted to at this stage you could freeze it and put it in the freezer. We're going to put it in the oven. We're going to put you could put it in the freezer. Uh, when you take it out you're going to need to extend the baking time. You thaw it in the refrigerator for three to four hours and then the, extend the baking time another half hour. We've got aluminum foil that I've sprayed with nonstick spray. This is going to go in the oven at 375 for about an hour and then just test it to make sure that the lasagna noodles are done. Now if you had used cooked lasagna noodles this is only going to need to go into the oven at this point for about 25 minutes and that's a major difference so you're going to want to, to make sure that you make that note uh, the notes in the recipe but make sure that you know which way you're going and, and follow correctly through there. 
Once that's done, you're going to let it sit about 10-15 minutes so that it solidifies and you end up with spinach lasagna that I think so, uh, your family is really going to enjoy. Uh, it's a little bit different. It's a little lighter than some of the heavier lasagnas with sausage and, and ground beef and so on. Uh, so it's a little bit of a change of pace and something you're going to like. You will notice that if you do it with the uncooked noodles that the surface is going to be a little bit more ragged uh, and bumpy than if you use cooked noodles because the way they expand is not going to be as controlled as if you lay them in there already done. That's it. That's spinach lasagna for Oklahoma Gardening. This is Barbara Brown.